Hello once again, and thanks for coming back. Uh, here's one more exercise, now looking at two population uh, proportions. Uh, this will be our last video here in uh, module 10. So now we're gonna look at a two-tail test, and again, hopefully there'll be some clues in the problem uh, to point us in that direction, rather than just being told exactly what it is. So let's get into the exercise here, and uh, we'll see how we go. So, uh, work, many employers are beginning to recognize the importance of maintaining happy and healthy workforce. Some employers even provide their workers with all kinds of things to do, all kinds of resources to improve their quality of life, sporting activities, tennis courts, pickleball courts, and all sorts of stuff. However, some people argue that these resources are not enjoyed equally by men and women. Therefore, it is important to ensure that the resources being offered are benefiting both genders equally. In order to ensure this to be true, one employer periodically samples its employees and asks whether or not they're satisfied with the current working environment. Okay, so here's our data. Uh, we've got um, 57 women were sampled, 61 men were sampled, and here's uh, the number of satisfied uh, number of satisfied respondents in that survey. So, formulate a test to determine. Uh, both genders are equally satisfied with their workplace environment. So there's, without even being told that it's a two-tailed test, here we're performing a test to see that they are equally satisfied. Uh, so those two proportions of satisfied individuals are equal across gender. So my null and my alternative, here again we're testing proportions, P1 minus P2, and again, we don't have to put in as much thought as to how we define our populations when we're doing a two-tailed test, but it's still something that is necessary. So here I'll just call this my population one or my proportion one and my proportion or population two. So this is gonna be equal to zero, this is not equal to zero. And so if the evidence supports the null hypothesis, then that supports the claim that yes, it appears as though uh, both genders are enjoying these resources equally. If the evidence supports the alternative hypothesis, then there may be an issue, there may be a problem that uh, we'll have to resolve. Okay, so let's uh, go through, oh, we just skipped to draw our conclusion. Okay, so we've got a few steps uh, in between here. And we'll do this at the 05 level of significance. So what we need, we want our Z statistic, this is the difference in our point estimates, uh, divided by the standard error. So we have still to calculate our two sample proportions, and this standard error is also a little bit more tedious to calculate. Here we want to calculate this proportion, which I'll tell you in a second what that is times one over the, each of the sample sizes. So that proportion, that is what we call the pooled estimator. And this is um, a, a result of uh, this, al always an underlying assumption in hypothesis testing that the null hypothesis is true unless we have evidence to show otherwise. So if the null is true and P1 is equal to P2, so they're equal to one common P, one common proportion, well then, what is our best guess of that common proportion? And so that's what we need to calculate here in our standard error, and that is what is called the um, pooled estimator. And it's really just a, a weighted average of our, whoops, missing an N. It's just a weighted average of our two sample proportions. Okay, so we've got a few things to, to, a few steps here. So the first thing that I'm going to do is calculate our sample proportions. So if I look at, uh, let's move this over here. So for women, that's 51 out of 57. So that's uh, 89.5. So 0 0.895. And for the men, 49 out of 61.803. So there's my numerator, 0 0.895 minus 0 0.803. Now we need to work up to the standard error, which means I must first calculate this little bit here. So I'll do, go ahead and do that. This is gonna be 57 
times 0.895 plus 61 times 0.803 divided by 57 plus 61. Now, if you've, if you've watched my previous video, I will have shown how this is exactly equal to, if I just take these numbers here, this is going to be 51 plus 49 divided by 57 plus 61. Those are exactly equivalent um, ways of calculating this. And let's, uh, let's punch those numbers. So I have 51 plus 49 divided by 57. Oops, not divided by. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, let me try that again. So the numerator is 100 divided by 57 plus 61. So 0 0.848, I guess. 0 0.848 is our pooled estimator. I'm going to write that in up here. 0 0.848. Now we can calculate our standard error. So I'm going to plug in our numbers here now. So we have 0 0.848 times 1 minus 0 0.848 times 1 over 57 plus 1 over 61 and then we take the square root of all of that and let's see what we get okay so 0 0.848 times 1 minus 0 0.848 equals times open brackets 1 over 57 plus 1 over 61 close brackets equals and then square root and I get 0 0.0647 0 0.0647 keep it the four decimals there okay so now finally after all of that there's my denominator 0 0.0647 and so finally, our Z statistic is, clear all of that nonsense, 0 0.895 minus 0 0.803 divided by 0 0.0647 equals 1.42. 1 after all of those calculations, finally we get that Z statistic. So that's what we want, that's what we've been working towards. Now we want to find what is the p-value that corresponds to that Z statistic. So for that, now we go to our Z tables. So I'll come over here, my Z statistic is 142. Let's clean this up. So 1.42. And so that comes down to here, and again, that's this lower tail, 0 0.9222. Well, this is, don't forget, a two-tailed test. So that's not the probability we want. We want whichever probability is the smaller between the left side or the right side, and then we multiply that by 2. So what I need here is 1 minus... 0.9222. So this is going to be 1 minus 0 0.9222.0778. And our p value, again, remember this is a two tailed test. So our p value is equal to twice that value times 2. So 0.1556. 1556. So I can come back here. And I'm running out of room. I'm going to clear this up a little bit down here. I have a p value equal to 1556.1556. If we're performing this test at the alpha 05 level of significance, that is greater than alpha. So we do not have sufficient evidence to reject. This is a do not reject. I am unable to, so to show that there is a difference 
uh, in rates of satisfaction among men and women with respect to all of these wonderful resources that are being offered. So I'm unable to say that that difference in the proportion of each gender satisfied uh, with these resources, I'm unable to say that there is a difference. The uh, statistics supports the claim that um, they are equivalent. Okay, so that's it. That's all there is to it. I say that staring at this screen and it's covered in all of these uh, tedious little calculations. So I know it's tedious, but the process again is exactly the same as all of the other tests that we've done. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, and uh, we'll uh, be producing even more videos. Not for chapter 10, we're done for this module, but now we'll get into uh, the next topic. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.